You're listening to Performance Anxiety on the Pantheon Podcast Network, and I'm your host, Mark. And Rebecca Pigeon is today's guest. You may know her from one of the 10 albums she's released, or you may recognize her from her roles in movies like The Dawning, The Heist, Red, or Bird Box. It turns out that creativity runs in her family. Her mother is an accomplished yoga instructor. Her grandmother was the editor of Architectural Digest, a magazine that I used to study like a textbook. And her sister was celebrated artist Olga Lehman. So it's no surprise that Rebecca was drawn into both music and acting at an early age. She even attended the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, where she started recording demos with Roger Fife as Ruby Blue. And even though they signed to a record label, she continued to pursue her acting career as well. She's been able to cultivate both careers successfully over the years, resulting in 10 albums and over 30 acting credits in television and movies. Rebecca's 10th release is a concept album called Parts of Speech, Pieces of Sound. But it's not about dragons, a dystopian future, or even a historical figure or event. It's a very esoteric topic that means a lot to her. Each song has a beautiful story behind it. And we discuss the focus of the album, why it's so important, and which song got me into a tiny bit of trouble. So go check out RebeccaPigeonMusic.com to check out the album and get her social links. And follow us at Performance ANX on all the socials. Reach out there or through the Performance Anxiety Pod at gmail.com. You can be amazing and help support the podcast by buying merch at performanceanx.threadless.com or simply buy us a cup of coffee at ko-fi.com slash performance anxiety. Now let's get into the flow with Rebecca Pigeon on Performance Anxiety on Pantheon Podcast Network. Great. Okay. Hi, I'm Rebecca Pigeon. I'm here on um, Performance Anxiety Podcast talking about my upcoming release of my new album, Parts of Speech, Pieces of Sound. So, oh my gosh, my son is outside doing yard work for some reason. I couldn't, I can't get him to do yard work normally. There's just the one thing he wants to do yard work is when I'm recording. Oh, well, that's good. At least you're getting some yard work done. Yeah, it's starting to get dark. I'm like, hey, you got to put it away. I'm about to record. Where, where are you? I am in Winchester, Virginia. Oh, okay, okay. So, home of Patsy Klein. So, wow. Yeah, so it's starting to get dark. And my and now my dogs are running around. This is chaos over here, apparently. <laughs> it looks much calmer where you are. It's not usually that calm. I've got two enormous dogs as well who are usually doing something destructive. <laughs> Sounds That's like my house. Demo, yeah. Yeah, I've got uh, two, one's 65 and one's 95 pounds. So um, Yours are heavier than mine. My dogs just ate a, a leather glove yesterday, <laughs> so I was on the phone with the emergency room. Oh, no. I know. Oh, I hope they're okay. Ugh, they're fine. They're so naughty. Oh man, that's yeah. Did they're they're multiple offenders. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might be able to beat you. My daughter's dog just ate through the power cord of our vacuum. Oh God! I don't know. That's so annoying. It's so stupid. It's so stupid because it doesn't even taste good. I, I mean, know. what? I know, and it's not like he chewed it and stopped. It's. I mean, there's like you know three inches that are that's just shredded oh god they're so dumb and we love them so much i know he's, he's i have terrible. one evil dog and one follower oh. the, evil, the evil dog gets all the ideas she says hey listen i've got a great idea don't say anything just follow me yeah and the other one's like okay yeah let's do it sounds good sounds good that it's uh, <laughs> i i've got one grumpy dog and then the other one's the follower so it's mm -hmm. uh, well I usually begin the shows by not always talk, by talking about our dogs, but mm. it's usually it's important to talk about your dogs. I think it is. It, well, they're part of the family. Yeah. So what I, speaking of family, I usually, I like to discover how my guests got into their art. And uh. a lot of times it's, you know, parents made them take lessons or they found music on their own, but Yours is a little bit different because your family is so interesting. I mean, it seems you almost had no choice but to do something unique. Because, I mean, your father was a professor at MIT. Your mother is a yoga instructor. And your 
grandmother was the editor of Architectural Design Magazine, which... How did you know that? Wow, uh, good research. I Well, I also loved Architectural Digest because I was a photographer yeah. for years, so I would, I would oh, get it and okay. study it to, to, uh, for my classes and also. Yeah. And your grandmother's sister was... Olga Lehman, known for her work in what, illustration, uh, graphics mm-hmm. design, and she did some album covers. I did not know that. I mean, I know that she did a lot of art design and art for, for she worked at um, uh, the big studios in, in um, London. Um, she worked with all, all the movie studios. She worked in, she worked, apparently she worked with Chaplin, I heard. She oh, worked wow. with... Um, all sorts of um, amazing people. That yeah. is wild! Oh my god! I, and in my research, I didn't I didn't go too deep into her since I'm talking with you and mm. we're talking about about you and not her. But I did see some really cool stuff, like uh, and it was all like BBC album covers and some really interesting stuff. Yes, yes. I'm just looking for I've I've got some pictures of hers that she she painted um, portraits of our family. You know. Oh, wow. <laughs> As we were growing up, and of our um, grandparents and our parents, and oh, I don't wow. see them here. I think they're downstairs. I just brought them back from Scotland. When I looked it up, she did uh, some record sleeves for Argo Records in the UK from '54 to '57. Uh, let's see. Yes, because her husband Carl Houston, I believe, ran that label. Okay. Oh, that ma- okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah. So I'm looking at uh, Bella Bartok. Under Milkwood, a BBC recording. Uh, Ah, yes, yes. Songs from Jamaica, recorded by Edric Connor. Songs from Trinidad. So some really interesting stuff. Yes, yeah. No, they they were a a force of nature, those two women. Monica (laughs) Monica Pigeon and Olga Lehman. And their brother, George Lehman, was a virtuoso piano player. I didn't know him very well, but yeah. So it's, it's in your blood. I, yeah, I suppose so. God, I haven't even thought about it. But yeah, they're, they're interesting people. And my great grandmother, their mother, was a, was Scottish. She was from Edinburgh, and she was a, a wonderful singer. And a, um, I believe there's some tape of her singing. She used to sing old Scottish folk songs. And you know, I grew up in Edinburgh, and you know, Scottish folk music is in our blood. My bro- my brother, Matthew Pigeon, is also an actor and, and a musician. And so we, we grew up on that kind of music. It was great. Oh, that is amazing. And, and you mentioned your, your brother being an actor. You don't stick to one discipline either. I mean, you've delved into music and acting yourself. So mm-hmm. was there one that, that pulled you in earlier? Was, was there a, a pull to music mm-hmm. or acting when you were a, a, a child that I think I was pulled into acting. You know, we always did little plays, you know, for the family. They they would dutifully come and sit there and, you know, yeah. tolerate this <laughs> madness that we put on for them. But I was drawn into music as well, also from an early age. I, I think they kind of went hand in hand a bit, which I think it can often be the case with performers. You know, you often find that actors are musicians and vice versa. That's true. That is true. You see a lot of crossover. Yeah. I mean, in the old days of Hollywood, you had to do all of that stuff. You had to be a dancer and a singer and an actor and everything. That's true. That's true. Not so much specialization yeah. back then. Vaudeville and... Yeah. At what point did you consider, and, and I guess maybe either one, either way, acting or music, when did you really start thinking about that prof- as a profession? Mm. Um, I was at already at drama college when my musical partner, then uh, Roger Fife, called me and said there was a we'd we'd made some sort of demos and things, and he said there was a, an independent record label interested in doing a record with us. And so when I left the college, the drama college I was at, Rada, we made a record, and we hadn't even really f- formed a band or performed. Um, at all. Oh, wow. Li- live. So, you know, basically we didn't really know how to play our instruments or anything. And we just, <laughs> we hadn't even heard of a click track. And we went down to this studio and, and made this first album. Yeah. And that was Ruby Blue, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that was just the two of you then to start with. Yes. Oh, wow. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Without a healthy mind, 
Being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is, therapy works. But what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships or at work, not dealing well with the stress. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you to help. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Try doing that in person. So join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. And a special offer to Performance Anxiety listeners, you can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash performance anxiety. That's betterhelp.com slash performance anxiety. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this podcast. Hey guys, I've got some great news. Performance Anxiety and Pantheon Podcasts are giving away an exclusive VIP experience to see Nick Mason's Saucer Full of Secrets. So head to pantheonpodcast.com slash Nick Mason to enter, find the link in the show description, or head over to our Twitter, Facebook, or Nick Mason's Facebook page for the link to enter to win. Head over to pantheonpodcast.com backslash Nick Mason to enter. Find the link in the show description or head over to our Twitter, Facebook, or Nick Mason's Facebook page for the link to enter to win front row seat upgrades, a very special commemorative guitar pick shaped necklace carved down from a drum cymbal played by Nick Mason himself. You also get a selection of curated exclusive VIP merchandise, including a VIP laminate and lanyard, crowd free shopping at a dedicated merchandise stand before the show, and on site perks such as priority check in. VIP express lane into the venue for ease of entry and a dedicated customer service line. So enter now at pantheonpodcast.com backslash Nick Mason. Winners will be notified via email one week prior to the event. So enter now. I started listening to that and I really liked it. I've got to tell you that, that my favorite app all about that is, is uh, wintry day. Oh, because right. it's a little spooky, especially when, a bit spooky. Yeah, especially when that like that howl that sounds like an air raid siren comes in. It's well, it's about nuclear war, so yeah. Well, that makes sense. That song. <laughs> I, I was very concerned about it back then. I was really frightened as a teenager about that. That's true. You, know, you, you don't think about that so much anymore. No, I, I, isn't that weird? Yeah. Because I guess we're more into sort of chemical warfare and viruses. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently yeah, we are. Yeah, we, we don't need all We've that. Got enough on our plate. We can't be bothered worrying about nuclear war as well. I kind of wish we had those days now. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll edit that part out. Oh. So. <laughs> yeah, edit, 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 quick, edit. So around the same time you're working on Ruby Blue, you've also secured some pretty high-profile acting roles, like playing opposite Sir Anthony Hopkins in the dawning and there was a kind of a big gap between ruby blue and the, and your first solo album was were you had you stepped away from music intentionally uh, or was it no I, well i had emigrated i you know i met my future husband in london i was acting in a play there of his and we met and then i moved to the states and i think it just took me a little while to find a home 
uh, a musical home, uh, a record. I was looking for a record company okay. because that was still a thing back then uh, right. that you sort of had to do. So um, eventually I signed with Chesky Records and made um, some records with them in New York. So I yes. think that's probably what the, the space was. Okay. Cause, yeah, because looking at it, there's a, about a seven-year gap between Glances, Askances, and The Raven. Oh, really? Huh, yeah. Interesting. I went back and I started listening to your earlier albums. Mm. And I, I love the sound. That there's, a, mm. I hear, there's a lot of like a, maybe a Bossa Nova, Astrid Gilberto mm. kind of sound yeah. to the albums. And I, I, I mean, I love her. So it, it was a natural yeah. draw for me. And you do some really interesting things. Like you, when you're doing your covers... You've done a couple that that's really stand out for me because you're not afraid to make them your own, like Spanish Harlem and Wouldn't It Be Nice. Those are really good. But what really kind of blew me away was Bring It On Home to Me. I'd never thought about putting Auld Lang Syne in with Bring It On Home to Me. That is, that's amazing. I... I, I just keep listening to it and listening to it just because it, it felt so natural. Yeah, they're kind of musically very similar, if not the same. There's it's not completely the same chord structure. They do depart a little bit, but uh, yeah, we thought, wow, these guys really work well together. Let's do this. Bring your sweet love in. Bring it on home to me. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. <laughs> that record was um, that was produced by Joel Diamond. He was he produced those records in in those days, and he was a great musician and got a a, a bunch a, w a wonderful band together. Um, I think on that track, Felicity Huffman, my friend, who's also as you know an actress, yeah, um, yeah. she she came and sang with me on that track. Oh, really? Oh, that's awesome. She's the other female voice. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I didn't even realize that. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. She's got a great voice. I, didn't, I had no idea. I also you love... How I, these actors are secret musicians. I, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's going to be the theme for this her episode. Husband, her husband, Bill Macy, is a great musician and a great songwriter. Really? I'd, I'd heard mm -hmm. that he was... He plays the ukulele. Okay. I, I, I think I remember hearing about him being musical, but I don't remember ever knowing that he wrote music. Mm, oh, that's, does. that's fascinating. So after a couple albums, you go back to doing some, some more traditional folky sounding stuff on four Marys, which I loved. That was so great. Yeah. And I, I love that kind of thing anyway. Those are, those are all traditional songs. I wanted to do a record of, of, um, traditional music. McDougal's Man is a great uh, man. I, I really did enjoy it. And I'm not even going to Actually, try that's to... the one song that's not a traditional. That was written by my friend Coco Callis, who's oh. a, a musician um, in Vermont. She wrote that song. Really? It's, it great sounds song. like it's an old traditional song. That is, I know, I know. Perfectly... Well, I think she she was, you know, she's sort of born again from that. She thinks that she lived in, in those times and, <laughs> and she's reincarnated. <laughs> well, it comes across in the yes. songwriting for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did not come for naught, I came to own McDougal's men are come, my lads, they'll be here in the morn I traveled hard upon the road through the rainy night Call the men, take arms, my lads, it'll be a heavy fight it seems the last you've taken in is promised to another. She's no who she appears to be. She lied about her mother. She said she was a tinker lass who lost her way so blind. And I didn't. I didn't expect to see 
a song about the Texas Rangers, but after hearing the the lyrics, it makes a lot of sense. It fits in mm. perfectly. Mm. Well, I loved the version of Texas Rangers done by Ian and Sylvia. Oh, okay. And I didn't end up doing their version. I did a more trad version of it, but that's what inspired me. That old recording okay. of theirs. Yeah. Before you reach the station, boys, I'm sure you'll have to fight. And when the bugle sounded, our captain gave command. To arms, to arms, he shouted, and by your horses stand. I saw the smoke ascending, and it seemed to reach the sky. The first thought then it struck me My time had come to die And in between all these albums, I mean, you're still acting. You're, you, you're picking up some incredible stuff. Like uh, there's, I mean, you're in Red, you're in uh, Heist. We mentioned The Dawning, Bird Box which is enormous. Is it difficult to, to juggle? Because I mean, you're, you're acting, you're writing and performing, you're raising a family, you got your dogs. <laughs> <laughs> it it's the dogs that, quite honestly, are just the most difficult to juggle. <laughs> I can see that. Look at those guys. Yeah, they're huge. <laughs> um, you know, uh, everybody asks me this question, and it, it hasn't been, nothing has conflicted. I don't know why. I think everything's just gone. I think when I'm, uh, I've always managed to record records sort of in between acting jobs or do acting jobs in between records. I don't know which, which it is, okay. but I've never really had to, I mean, there have been times, there have been conflicts, a few, but not many. When I've had to turn down one thing for the other thing. Right. Uh, when you had many. your son, right? That was, because I, I remember yes. hearing you, that uh, you had to turn down a role because you yes. had a son. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was That's with uh, Paul Thomas. Paul Thomas Anderson was making Magnolia and asked me if I wanted to come and do it. That's what it was. Uh, yeah. A little part in it. And I said, God, yes. But I just had my son and he had an ear infection. I couldn't get him on a plane. So I said, I oh. can't. Um, but that, uh, yeah, so that was a bit sad. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Hey guys, I want to talk to you about socks for a second. Why not? It's a music podcast. But I tried a pair of socks from Boldfoot and love them. I've only worn them once because my kids have stolen them. So in my household, that's the best endorsement I can give. And I guess it's fitting because the design I chose was jailbait. Wait, jailbird. The design I chose was jailbird. I might keep that in. The socks are 100% American made and 5% of all proceeds go to veteran charities. It makes sense seeing that Boldfoot is a family and veteran owned company. They have a huge variety of styles. So check out boldfoot.com and buy some of the best socks you've ever slapped on your feet. And help veterans while you're at it. That's boldfoot.com. And you have had the opportunity to combine the two with Behind the Velvet Curtain. That was, uh, that, that was yes. with, the, uh, with Red Belt. Yes. Um, uh, some of that was used as a soundtrack for Red Belt. That's right. I'm going digging. And Luciana, Luciana Souza came on that record. Uh, it was produced by Larry Klein and Luciana Souza, the great Brazilian singer, came on that record to do a duet with me on a song called When You Were Mine. Oh, wow. Which is really thrilling. While I travel from China to Brazil and maybe one 
That's something that was that you were approached to do. That they, did they know about your musical career and say, "Hey, you know, why don't you throw some songs in on us and do a soundtrack for us?" Or yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. The director asked me. He also happened to be my husband at the time, and still is. So <laughs> he knew about my musical career. <laughs> oh man, well that's good. That's you know that uh, makes it a little more convenient. <laughs> Talk about <laughs> keeping things in the family. <laughs> Well, it, it just goes along with the, with the, uh, your history of having so many creative people in your family. Yeah. You've got a new album coming out and it's your 10th album. I mean, that is quite a milestone. Yes, I know. Isn't it weird? I, I, and I, I mean, I, somebody said it's my 10th. I'm not sure. I haven't counted. Let's see. Well, I've got it pulled up right here. Let me, let me double check. I think Howard told me it was your 10th. One, two, three, four. If we count, if we count Ruby Blue, then I think it is your 10th. Because mm. you did two albums with Ruby Blue, right? Two albums with Ruby Blue. I did three with Chesky. They did an, a retrospective after that, I believe, too. But ah, okay. that, that doesn't count. And then I made three with Larry Klein. And I made... A uh, couple independently, and then I made a double album independently, and oh, then man. this album. So the double, which, I don't okay. know how many that is. The double album is called "Sudden Exposure to Light." Okay, um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. Yeah, that came out, I believe, in two thousand eighteen. Okay. Uh, one part of it was produced by Thomas Bartlett, also known as Dove Man. He's a wonderful producer. And the other part was produced by uh, Fernando Perdomo, who, who I co-produced this new record with parts of, of speech, pieces of sound. Yeah. So the new album, how did you come up with that title? Well, the new album is a concept album, and it's inspired through by um, some studies I was doing and still am doing about um, more esoteric yoga practices particularly the ch theory of chakras okay. and this sounds like really like airy fairy um <laughs> but it's not yoga music it's not meditation music it's still pop music or rock i i would say art rock or something but it isn't it is inspired by this theory and there's a particular theory that i was learning about called pranakriyas which is which are basically like mantras, like the mantra that everybody knows, Om, mm -hmm. is called a bija mantra. That means a seed mantra. Bija means seed. Okay. And these mantras are spoken silently in practices like pranayama, breathing practices, or prachahara. They're, they're used silently. Um, to meditate and you, you know, you see monks saying Om and meditating. And right. so the, the idea is that you break, my idea is on, on the album is that you break down language into sound, right. And use the sound to, uh, for a sort of kind of communion, meditative communion with your whatever higher self, okay. blah, blah. And that's what the title of the album is referring to. Okay. You brought up an interesting point and I wanted to ask you about this because you said that it is, it, there is a concept album. Mm -hmm. It's about yoga, but it's not, it's not it's, for it's yoga. About, it's about experiences in, it's about experiences, perhaps in, in touching on transcendent, uh, sort of transformative states, but also it's a, it's an imaginative excursion through the, this journey of chakras. And it's, it's ch because chakras, it's a play, a playful, well, not playfully, chakras are, are associated with different deities and they're also associated with different elements. And at one point, the teacher, the, who I was studying with, 
um, I'm studying online with the teachings of the Iyengar family who have who took their teachings online, uh, you know, I think during COVID. And so all okay. of us students of the Iyengar community really benefited and have been benefiting greatly by these, I mean, hugely anyway. So the teacher, Prashant Iyengar, the master, who doesn't, you know, refer to himself as a master, but <laughs> he was talking about how the human embodiment, within the human embodiment, are celestial bodies and deities. And so I just had this idea of a kind of cosmic dance going on within uh, that I'm the observer of. Okay. And if there are deities within me, uh, that there's a world, you know, inside there. And that the characteristics of these, these deities um, I found very inspiring and the stories I found very inspiring of these deities, but it's not always deities. It could be experiences of my own, like, uh, for example, there's a couple of um, songs that are based on dreams that I had. Oh, um, okay. And uh, so, yeah, so I go through these chakras and so that's why I say it's a concept album. The, the concept kind of threads through these, through these chakras. And the, okay. the, the, the opening song is basically a rumination on the first three sutras of Patanjali. And also there's a couple of songs that, can you hear my dog? I just heard a collar going around. <laughs> they, they come and help me do my yoga practice. So you can imagine how peaceful it is. Uh, yeah. And there's a couple of songs that are uh, kind of reflecting on the, the asana, the, the pose Shavasana. Okay. <laughs> and thank you very much. That's a little interlude there. No, no problem. I had a visitor. <laughs> Dogs enjoyed that one. <laughs> so I've, I've been listening to the album quite a lot over the past couple of days. And I'll tell you a funny story that happened while I was listening. I was driving my Wait. daughter to school today and we put on um, and... Please forgive me if I mispronounce these. Uh, no, no, of course. I know it's difficult, the names. <laughs> Rudra Deva. Yeah, Rudra Deva. Yeah. Okay, we put that on, and it's one of my favorite songs on the album. We were listening to it as I was driving her to school, and mm -hmm. there's a part on there that sounds like a car horn. It is a car horn, oh, yeah. Okay, oh, good, good. My ears aren't killing me yet. So... <laughs> As we're driving, we're just kind of, when that comes out, we're just kind of pantomiming the, the, the horn. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I accidentally, everyone's and I accidentally I'm hitting the horn. And, and I'm driving into, into school and I'm oh, hitting no. this horn and people are just staring at me like, what are you, oh, what's Oh, no, wrong? I'm getting you into trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I got some weird looks as I was listening oh, no. to that. <laughs> I got into the song so much I didn't even realize half the time I was hitting the horn. That's funny. Yeah, every people comment on that song. Rudra Deva is the destructive side of Shiva. Okay. Is the god of destruction and 
associated with thunder and lightning and fire and and fear and destruction and ah. so I sort of uh, get into that role. Yeah, you you that song. The singing is a little atypical for it. it's pretty wild. Yeah, I love it. Actually, I'd written that song and I had a much tame, more tame vocal, and I was playing it to somebody I'm, I really trust, and he kept saying, "No, it's you're not getting it. It's not." there yet and I kept trying and trying changing bits and he eventually he said to me you know what you need to be insane in your vocal you just need to go cr crazy and yeah. be unrestrained so then I did and uh, I think that's it's about what amazingly happened. well I love it it's one of my favorites on the album <laughs> so glad it is it's it's yeah it's very like you said a very unrestrained it's it's it, I wasn't expecting it after listening to some of the other songs that mm -hmm. I'd heard it. So it was really cool. I also love the atmosphere that you create in tiny room. Mm -hmm. It's a very atmospheric song and it's very almost, I don't know. Gosh, I'm probably going to blow my cover and show my ignorance here, but it sounds almost very only middle Eastern in, in, in some mm -hmm. of it. It's, mm -hmm. and, and I love the sounds, uh, middle Eastern music. It's just, Really, really a, a great song. There's a tiny It does definitely have that vibe, I, and it I don't didn't mean for it to particularly, but I based it around this mantra, ya 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 yum, okay, uh, which I sing over and over again, which is just a, a root and um, a drone, like a drone, and then create this music over the top of it, and I think that that's probably why it sounds that way. Going back to uh, Rudra Deva, you do the exact opposite with one another one of my favorite songs the blue lagoon your singing mm -hmm. is absolutely beautiful on that i love the phrasing and i love mm -hmm. that it's almost like a, a very spooky echoey reverby piano is and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you've got some really interesting little incidental sounds coming mm -hmm. through on that it is very very fascinating track chakra that's associated with water and that's also a song that I wrote remembering a dream I had as a child where I'm lying beside a pool of water that seems to be endlessly infinite you know and it's deep deep blue and there was this pervading sense of calm and I knew that I was in the presence of God it was divine bliss wow. and I, then I as a child, I can remember always trying to get back in my dreams. And so one voice is that, and Vishnu is associated with that chakra that's called Shvadistan. And so the one voice in the song is saying, just lie down, I'll show you who you are. And the other voice is me saying, look, I'm lost. I'm turning around in circles. Nothing makes sense. And I can't find the way. Um, oh, wow. And then the other, you know, and then the the meditative voice comes in and says, I'll show you who you are. That's incredible. Um, the other two songs I really uh, wanted to talk to you about, my mm. favorite song on the album, mm. which is Silent Sound. Mm. That, of course, is just the, what, what your voice yeah. does. And that is absolutely beautiful. It's mm. just it's just beautifully performed and I would just, I don't even know if I have a question for this song. I just, I just, I just love what you've done with it. It's just a beautiful song.
song has a story. Uh, my yoga teacher was um, telling a story as an analogy for these prana kriyas that I just mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. She says there's a girl who goes to the temple every day and she kneels down to pray, but she's saying the letters of the alphabet. She's not saying any prayers. And a priest overhears her and says, little girl, what are you doing? I see you come here every day, and, but you're saying the alphabet. And she says, well, I don't know any prayers, but I know the letters. And so I'm saying the letters so that God can take the letters and put them in the correct order to make sense and to make sacred meaning wow. out of them. And so she said, that's what you do with these mantras. You offer them. And that's the meditation. And that's the communion. That's amazing. Oh, my gosh. That's beautiful. <laughs> the other song that I thought was really interesting is the song that you have kind of a co-writing credit with your mom, uh, Savasana. Shavasana. Shiva, okay. Shavasana. Shavasana. Yeah. Ah, I knew I was going to get one of these terribly wrong. So. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> that song is uh, very it, intriguing. Yes. My mother is a senior Iyengar yoga teacher. She started working with BKS Iyengar, traveling to Pune in 1980. Oh, wow. I believe, when I was a teenager. And she wrote that poem many years ago on the death of um, a great friend of hers who was also a teacher, Shavasana. And I remember being very struck by the poem. Um, and then when I was writing this record, when I realized I'm writing a record, I thought, Oh, I, 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 first of all, I thought I want to get something about Shavasana in here because Shavasana can be like a doorway into this more esoteric aspect of practice. And, okay. um, and then I remembered her poem. So I put it to music and I just recite the poem, which I think is very beautiful. of my toes and the skin on the soles of my feet. I have unlocked my ankles and the complex hinges of my knees. I have let go of the muscles of my calf and thigh and untied the joints of my hips. I have left empty the bowl of my pelvis that twice fed life. I have unstrung my spine. I don't even know how to describe it. I'm going to have to, I'm going to put a clip in so mm -hmm. everyone can hear it because it's just fascinating to, to hear what's going on. It's, mm. I, I would listen to that one over and over again today. It was, it was really wonderful. Mm. Are you planning on playing any shows to yes, support this? Yes. Yes. Thank you for asking. I'm going to play a show in New York at Joe's Pub on the 19th of September with some great musicians there. And then I'm playing a record release show at McCabe's oh, guitar wow. shop here in Los Angeles with quite a big band uh, on the 24th of September um, to mark the release of the, the album. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, and we'll, we'll be playing quite a bit of the album. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Are you, are you planning on uh, taking it out on the road at all? Or are you too busy for that or just do some? No, I'm stuff? not too busy. I, I, I would love to take it out on the road in whatever format. I just have to work it out, you know, see how it does it, because it's, I perhaps need to get some backing from somebody uh, financially to yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. If let's just say that happens, would it be a, the, a full album experience or are you going to throw in some of your other material as well? I would probably do some other material too. I, in the, both of these shows, I'm going to be doing a, a few things that are not recorded, um, oh, wow. which I hope to record in the future and some things from back catalogs that I particularly like. And then I'll, on the second half of the show, um, get into this n new record. Yeah. Oh, that would be amazing. I would, I, gosh, if I'm going to keep an eye out because if you can make it happen and come to the DC area, I'll, I'll be there. I've been to the DC area before. Uh, it's nice to play there. I would love to come again. There's, a, there's plenty yeah. of places in DC, Maryland, I know. Virginia. There's some great, great venues there. I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, where can people find the album? How can they order well, it, the album, it the album uh is it's not coming out until the 23rd of september okay and it's being distributed by the orchard 
uh, digitally. And it will be on all the platforms, the, the major platforms and the not so major platforms. And you can <laughs> find it on my website too. I'm going to make a small run of CDs, which I'll sell from my website. Oh, um, excellent. But CDs are so like, they're kind of like little tombstones nowadays. Nobody buys them. I know, but I love um, them. I love them. I've got like 4,000. Okay. Them. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, you can have a CD. There you go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where is I'd there love a, to make some vinyl. We'll see. Oh, yeah. If you can ever get that uh, mm. nine-month back up. I know. Clear. I know. I know. So uh, what's, where can people follow you on social media and just keep an eye on what you're um, doing? Yeah. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, and um, that's it, actually. All right. And it's, Facebook and Instagram. So you probably very, very easy to find Rebecca oh, I've Pigeon. Got a website as well. Website, rebeccapigeonmusic.com. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate this. It's, it's been really nice talking to you, Mark. Look up at the light. Run. Right.